week. Hello, welcome to the program. Ahead, the latest newspaper and magazine circulation data. A new men's title for Australia. Can Maxim crack the tough local market? And the Oprah juggernaut heads towards its final week with 10 to broadcast the final episodes in prime time. But first, Fairfax has confirmed it's looking to sell the group's broadcast division. Key assets are radio stations 2UE in Sydney and 3AW in Melbourne with the market tipping Macquarie Radio as the most likely front runner. Now the sale price would be somewhere between $250 and $300 million with the proceeds used to get the balance sheet in better shape. For more on this story, including market reaction, I'm joined from Melbourne by Chris Weston at IG Markets and in the studio, James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. James, I might start with you. Just firstly, what's the rationale for, uh, for, for hiving off these assets? Yeah, I think a few people were surprised actually when it had been rumoured for a long time that the radio would be sold. It just seems like they want to get uh, a bit of cash in. It will give them a bit of breathing space, pay down some debt and maybe some, some you know, money if they want to go out and buy something that they see as a bit more of a strategic fit for them. Uh, Chris Weston, what's the market made of this move? I think they took it reasonably positive. I think people, certainly the economists or the analysts who are looking at the stock, were looking for some sort of strategic action to take place and I think an asset sale was generally one that had been anticipated. I think that the fact that they're selling these assets is, is a reasonably good fit. It makes a bit of sense. It's a standalone entity. People look at Fairfax and they're looking at the fact they haven't been able to capture the ad sense, uh, the, ad, the, the ad market recovery that we've seen this year. Uh, they've been growing their ad sales much, much lower than what the market's been doing. So I think people see this as a, a perhaps an asset that would, would make sense to sell. Uh, and I think people have been looking to get into the stock. We saw the stock earlier in the week trade down to a dollar and three cents. People looking at good buying down there. We've seen a bit of volume come into the stock. A lot of the institutional banks are suggesting that, that they've seen some reasonable volume going through and traders are looking to a warming of those levels and uh, I think from those lows is up about 8% uh, or so. So certainly uh, you could say the asset sales have, uh, have, have helped. Uh, it depends what happens with what they're going to use with those proceeds and, and uh, perhaps a share buyback could be on the cards. I think some people have speculated that could be the case. Yeah, so what uh, you think the market would prefer Fairfax to be sort of a, a single media play? Do you think that's what's, what's driving the positivity or is it more indeed um, you know that they're expecting some form of capital management uh, change well, I think this, the, the radio side of things is, is, is reasonably, to, reasonably easy to separate as a sort of, it works as pretty much as a standalone company. So it's in, 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 in retrospect, it's actually quite an easy asset to separate compare, and, and it would leave them, as you say, as a standalone entity, which they can use the sort of publishing business and, and the, the, asset, the New Zealand assets and, and the Australian assets uh, and try and rebuild them as such. I mean, if you look at the valuation on Fairfax right now, a lot of bad news is being priced in. It's trading on eight times consensus earnings. Uh, so, and that's levels we saw pre-GFC as well. And, you know, some of the lowest levels on a valuation basis for a long time. So it is uh, pricing a lot of bad news. So hopefully we can get some, some you know, the, the proceeds we're looking between 260 and, and 290. And that's actually a pretty good, pretty good deal for people who are looking to buy that. That's eight and a half to, to nine and a half times forward earnings, uh, to times, uh, sorry, 2012 earnings. That's cheaper than what the people paid for the for stereo. So that's a good asset for people to pick up. Um, but I think, you know, people are saying, well, perhaps they're going to look to support that valuation by some sort of share buyback further down the line. And... Uh, I think the people who look like the, uh, the company is perhaps a bit of a standalone entity. Uh, James Macquarie was, you know, the clear sort of front runner that everyone talked about when, when we go with well, who's going to buy these assets, um, in, in particular to UE and 3RW. Um, is that what you'd think or do you think there might be some other dark horses in there? Yeah, Lachlan Murdoch's name's been mentioned a couple of times. I think he'd be probably looking maybe at uh, 96 FM, which is one of the interesting stations and the only FM licence they have over in Perth. He could perhaps add that to they have um, FM stations, of course, in all the other markets. They could bring that in with the classic rock and and, um, and that could make up an interesting trio, those three stations. The breaking up will be a challenge because, you know, those that talk network works as a talk network. The mm. jewel in the crown is obviously 3AW, but if you pull that out of it, it sort of makes the others less attractive. I think 3AW accounts for nearly a third of um, the the ad revenue just, just on its own, so it's a, it's a pretty plum prize, that one. And it does seem a little strange. I mean, either of you can jump in on this one, but, but radio seems to have been, you know, one of the media classes that's been talking about, um, you know, upholding 
ad revenues and, and things sort of seemingly to, to keep ticking over nicely. You've got digital coming in, um, whereas you know some some of the other parts of the media, television and print and whatever, are having a little bit of a tougher time. So why why get rid of radio now? Well, I think as Chris said, it's it's easier to maybe hive it off on its own. You know, it's, I don't think they did a terribly good job of integrating it. I mean, the best part of it that's been integrated was physically, you know, 3 aw has got the whole top floor of Fairfax's new Melbourne building. So, you know, that'll be an issue there. The, they're going to have to do a deal with the landlord to keep running that. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we'll move on. Men's magazine Maxim is set to launch an Australian edition in July. Now, the move comes after the failures of Ralph and Alpha to reach the necessary readership numbers. So is there room for a new player? Well, our industry expert today is Peter Zavik, the commercial director of Pacific Magazines, and he joins us in the studio. Of course, uh, I'm sure James has got some stuff to stay on this as well. Peter, we can start with you, though. A an interesting move um, from Maxim. I know a lot of the magazines you look after are a slightly more female skewed, but just tell us your top line thoughts on, um, on this move. Uh, top line thoughts are good luck. Uh, we welcome competition into the market and uh, you know, Maxim's an established brand overseas. But right now that retail, uh, you know, the retail circulation market and the advertising market are, you know, are, are pretty tough for all the established players. So yeah, there's some room there with mm. uh, Alpha. Uh, you know, um, ceasing publication. Um, yeah, well, the, the thing some people said to me when they heard this, they said, look, I better check the calendar, you know, that's, that's 2011. This was a good idea a decade ago, maybe even 15 years ago. A lot of publishers have looked at Maxim, so it has been a big success yeah. overseas. Um, it's not as good these days as it once was, but it's a very hard market now, that, that it, sort it of area. It seems to me, I mean, I, I had a quick look. Um, Lord knows what the engineering department <laughs> will think when they see my... <laughs> what I've been looking at on the internet but um, you know it, it's girly stuff it's lots of girls in bikinis but they have you know they seem to have an awful lot of events and, um, and and video and all that sort of stuff not actually much on there about the magazine so yeah well it's a visual feast for guys I mean that's the sell isn't it you know and it, yeah, well, so it, I'm told because yeah. I don't really <laughs> You can well, probably I didn't tell have me. any vision to play because I didn't think it was appropriate for no. Media Week. Um, let's uh, have a look at the circulation and readership numbers which have come out this week. Uh, we'll start with uh, with the newspapers if we can. Uh, we've got a graphic here showing, uh, so this is circulation um, in terms of size of circulation, uh, the telly, the Herald Sun, Sunday Mail, Saturday Herald Sun and Herald Sun, uh, the top five there, but all of them going backwards, James. Yeah, the, the, there wasn't a lot of good news for publishers in the latest uh, quarterly circulation figures. Probably the um, Sydney Morning Herald did, did pretty well in um, in circulation. Sorry, uh, that's actually readership. I've mucked that up. But anyway, okay. continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, the um, the readership, yeah, the, the Sydney Morning Herald was, was, again, that was okay in readership too. The Australian had some reasonable um, readership figures. That's a list of all, all the, the biggest, um, the most read newspapers, and yeah, they're all down down a little bit, is as there, happens most Is there a clear winner or a clear trend between sort of the News Limited and the Fairfax stable? Or? Well, it seems to be that the um, broadsheet, the sort of higher end of the market, if you like, is hanging on a little better. Mm. There's a bit of slippage at the at the um, sort of the, the, the tabloid end, if you like. OK, well, we've got circulation numbers uh, for the weekly magazines, uh, Woman's Day, New Idea, that's Life, Take Five and TV Week are, uh, are the top five. Um, Peter, I don't know if you want to comment on any of the movements there because we have seen all of these um, go backwards. Yeah, look, I think the interesting thing is that those movements are year on year. But if you look on the period, uh, period to period, so December to March period, you can actually see some some real stabilising of circulation. So some of that pain stopped a bit, has it, you think? That's right. And, you know, it was a tough, it was a tough quarter with the floods and, and the economic environment. But but, uh, you know, it's a very positive sign for the weekly markets and it's suggesting that the markets are starting to stabilise, the magazines are starting to stabilise and, you know, there's an opportunity now to sort of, you know, look at some growth. We've had some growth, as you, as you know, with Famous Magazine, um, uh, but, uh, you know, importantly, the big ones, uh, Woman's Day, New Idea, we had a wedding in London recently that, uh, you know, gave it a bit of a spike. So, um, you know, let's see if we can't sort of get that interest level getting back in there. Women have never lost their love of, of magazines. I mean, it's a tough environment and it's a discretionary purchase. Uh, and there are 10 weekly magazines out there now that are, that are vying for, uh, for that discretionary dollar. So to have, um, you know, to have that royal wedding and the interest around it and to see the sale 
sales spiked the way they did uh, was really encouraging. Just just on that royal wedding, that there was a it, it obviously had a big impact on sales. But I've heard a bit of bit of talk since then that maybe we can't jump on this as the panacea for the, oh, for the no, sector. It's not, uh, it's, it no, was no. a short term burst, no, 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 and no, no, and no. it mightn't be there as a you know. No, look, you're absolutely right. And I think Women's Weekly experienced oh. um, yeah as a monthly magazine. Sorry, Women's Weekly experienced uh, quite a surge there, and uh, you know that's great for the number and it'll probably help them through their audit but they've got to cycle that in 12 months time so that's going to be a tough one to repeat there's not too many of them planned I don't think going forward uh, but you're right it you know it's it's just good to have a little bit of royalty a little bit of class a bit of style back uh, for, for those women's weekly magazines in terms of uh, just the top five magazines overall we've got women's weekly and better homes as, as the top ones and they've actually made gains um, but obviously better homes uh, one of yours. What's what's Thank behind you. that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We're, we're number two oh, magazine like now. Really so readership so, yeah. yeah, but we knocked off Women's Day for the first time ever. Uh, you know, Women's Day was uh, you know was a machine many years ago, as you as you well know. Uh, and we're within sight of Women's Weekly. However, I think you know, we tried everything we could to get royalty on the front cover of Better Homes, but it just wasn't <laughs> going to work. So uh, yeah. Out there. yeah, we had a crochet the dress or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we just couldn't make it work. So the weekly will get a spike and, uh, and good on them. But uh, no, the magazine's a, a, you know, a, a machine. Uh, it's uh, you know, integrated cross-platform with um, the TV program, the website. There's a radio program. We've got live events now. We've spun off a number, number of other magazines from it as well. Diabetic Living continues to grow. Better Homes and Gardens, Diabetic Living. Uh, we've got uh, a Better Basics uh, spin-off, which Fast Ed from the TV show um, you know, uh, compiles for us. And, and those brand extensions are growing and growing as we go along as well. Did you want to ask about that? But just on, on the sort of the television integration, um, mm. with you know through the Seven Pacific Link, um, you know you, you've got the stuff with with My Kitchen Rules. Is this something that you're looking to do a lot more of? Yeah. Uh, in fact, we've got uh, you know Marie Claire TV program coming up very shortly uh, with uh, the Seven Network uh, on yep. Seven Two and and also on the main channel. So there there is more opportunity out there certainly. And how did that My Kitchen Rules sort of special well, do? Did, did uh, it okay? Went well, and I think uh, you know everybody's very happy with its performance and. Um, you know, don't be surprised if we don't do it again. The um, is it is it the specialist titles seem to be doing well. The you know I guess the the mainstream titles seem to have to get used to uh, the the new environment if you like. Their numbers are a wee bit bit under pressure. But the special interests, I'm thinking you know men's health, women's health. Absolutely. Um, you know, well, home, food, parenting, gardening, uh, even bridal have have done particularly well. And it's kind of you know in a lot of ways it's uh, you know. It, it's, it's women retreating back to traditional values of cooking at home, looking after their own environment. It's that kind of cocooning sort of, um, you know, aspect that's, that's come into their lives now that they've been through a GFC and, you know, there's still uncertainty going forward. So those magazines certainly have grown. And, and also on TV, programs like MasterChef have helped drive uh, the interest in food, obviously, and there are you know, homemaker programs as well, like Better Homes and Gardens, that drive food as well, uh, that drive home. Yeah. Um, we had... Deborah Thomas on from ACP a while ago. We're talking specifically then about I think the Gourmet Traveller, um, the iPad app. Yeah. But sort of all that move towards you know the, the big name titles um, moving digital. But then you know we were talking about trying to find the balance of then what you put online free, yeah. what you have in the iPad app, and how then you still keep you know yeah. people actually wanting to physically go in and, and, and pick up a copy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, the, the digital editions are here. We're in the market. The apps. I think the apps have got to be an extension of the magazine. I don't think they can replicate the magazine. They've got to offer an additional service over and above the magazine but in time you know we'll find the right models and uh, you know we'll extend the brands as we have in, in with other media hmm. the um, is there any sort of trends in retail I mean is it it's a mix between your, your supermarkets and your news agents um, yeah it's still tough it? <laughs> it's still yeah. tough in their trends um, yeah supermarkets are increasingly important but um, you know we've got many more uh, outlets uh, through the news agent and sub agent sort of system um, so the challenge keeping both those parties happy you know that Always a challenge. The, I guess supermarkets must be very demanding of their suppliers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, but then, but then news agents are the base of the business, I guess. So you you need to keep it's them still, happy. They are still, you know, well over two thirds of our of, of our business, and uh, it's it's ensuring that both channels are, e are equally uh, supported. Uh, as our subscriptions, you know, the subscriptions are, are becoming more and more important as well. So, okay. yeah. Peter, thank you. Pleasure. Good to have you.
Coming up on Media Week, the big O. Network 10 prepares to go all out with primetime airings of Oprah's final three programs. Stay with us.